Taurus. Welcome to your September 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. So I'm using the Morgan Greer deck for the spread I normally do and then I'm going to cap the reading off with a Akashic Tarot card, which is kind of like an oracle card, even though it says tarot. It does I did pick one for Scorpio, and it seemed like it corresponded with one of the, um, you know, typical tarot tarot cards, but not the the name is different, and there's not as many cards in the deck and stuff like that. So we're just going to I'm gonna do that. Uh, All right, two aces, beginnings. Putting these aside for now. So the heart of the matter is the Knight of Swords. If this is another person, um, this can be a an actual. Um, combination of fire and air. The air signs, I mean swords relate to air signs, so we're talking about Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. You being a fixed sign, maybe you're attracted to Aquarius, even though you guys are like totally different. Um, but the fire element is present with knights, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. And the combination of air and fire means that this person is very opinionated and passionate about their ideas to the point where other people may get offended and think this person is like too blunt, maybe undiplomatic. Sometimes this can be a lawyer. So if there's like um, a divorce case happening or you're thinking about consulting a lawyer or you have, but you haven't gone through with it, that could be what's happening for you because this is a love reading after all. So it probably might, you know, I said it probably might be. <laughs> uh, that it could it could be something with consulting a lawyer or wanting to consult a lawyer. The foundation card, which can point to past influences affecting present circumstances, is the six of pentacles, you see the scales, the, the gold coin, what are you worth, what are you receiving, you know, is it fair? And again, if it's the, if it's a lawyer situation and you're like settling uh, some situation with your soon-to-be ex-partner, spouse, then it could be distributing the money. But really, if we look deeper, which we should, we're talking about in terms of any type of relationship, of not having an equal relationship. Maybe you gave too much and got too little back. And one of the things, too, I think this is a very important point, because as I said that, I cringed internally. Um, I'm really very much against tit-for-tat kinds of relationships where... Somebody says, but I did this and you did, you know, where people keep books and things like that. I'm against that because I feel like sometimes people give to get. And so if this is something, if you're like hearing what I'm saying and you think I'm talking about just strictly money, that you spent money on somebody and you didn't get what you want wanted, then consider it a lesson well learned because Taurus is an earth sign and some and you might even have Venus in Taurus too could very well have Venus in Taurus Taurus <laughs> and as such you may view relationships in a very materialistic way when I say materialistic I'm not talking about greedy I'm talking about looking at it from an earth bound perspective where you are seeing well, this person, they didn't buy me gifts or they, I gave them gifts and 
They never would give me things and things like that. I know that I'm keeping it very crass by talking like that, but I know that this happens. I know it. Maybe not all Torians, for sure. I don't want to insult those who have higher, who are at a higher octave or higher vibration, but it can happen for sure with the sign of Taurus because you are the first earth sign. And you know, it. there's something to be said for it. It's not like, oh, this is terrible that Taurus thinks like this. It can make Taurus people very shrewd when it comes to material matters and very, you know, full of common sense and good at navigating this material world. But in relationships, we have to look at things from a deeper perspective. We can't, we can't um, just focus on material things. It just doesn't work. And you can't buy people. Maybe you tried to buy someone and it didn't work. And you gave and they took. And so it was an imbalanced relationship. Uh, what could, else could be happening here? Well, let's look at this card. The Page of Swords. Now, this could be an extension card of that Knight of Swords. And this person that you're dealing with, um, perhaps you gave and gave to this person, and it was never enough for them. Maybe they are paranoid. I mean, this card could be somebody whose uh, imagination is running away with them. And they accuse you of things that you didn't do. <laughs> I was thinking about Scorpio. <laughs> Uh, so I hope uh, I hope that uh, this is not a Scorpio person because that's the M.O. of Scorpio. <laughs> I'm talking about the lower octave, right? You know. But anyway, because uh, I just did Scorpio's reading and there was something to suggest Torah, so maybe there's something going on here. But here's the thing: um, the Page of Swords in reverse could be somebody who is immature in their emotions and and that when I say emotions um, this is not going to be somebody again this could be like an air sign kind of a person and they're not going to be very developed emotionally actually they're, they might be very immature and they're coming from a detached point of view so they have no problem doing things that are negative and just Kind of like, um, how would I put it, rationalizing it away. So if you're dealing with one of these types of people, just be aware of that. Don't uh, allow someone to give you this sense of, how can I put it? Um, don't let them get inside your head because they can be really intelligent people and they can be very dangerous because of this because they can get inside your head and they can uh, they can screw with your thoughts so you have to be on top of your game with this type of person um, they may be a con artist actually and I'm thinking of Gemini when I say this do not think that I'm putting down Scorpio or Gemini I'm talking about attributes associated to the shadow side of both of those signs. It can be too that this relationship is a new one with an earth sign and that you're getting away from an air sign uh, because I do have the ace of pentacles as the outcome. So besides Taurus, the other earth signs are Virgo and Capricorn. The higher message is the high priestess and this is kind of what I was alluding to earlier about the spiritual versus the material. Maybe some Taurus people are immersed a little bit too much in the pleasures of the flesh. And you are like, you're, you're kind of looking at your relationship for the pleasure that it can give you. Whether it is um, the physical relationship or just the indulgence of you know, whining and dining and gifts. And you want to see how you match up spiritually. 
And if you're a type of person who doesn't consider yourself spiritual, religious or spiritual, I like to say spiritual, um, ask yourself why that is. There's nothing to be ashamed about if you're not spiritual. If you, I mean, if you don't consider yourself spiritual, if you don't feel like you have that connection to God, do not feel like there's something wrong. What it means is that you are perhaps someone who either, maybe you came from an environment that was very um, oppressive with a particular religion, dogma, dogmatic, and you were preached to all the time and you were shamed for wanting pleasure, uh, for seeking pleasure. You were told, you know, sex is bad and that, you know, anybody who wants to enjoy themselves or feel good is suspect. These kinds of negative messages can really turn people off to God. Um, maybe you're interested in, um, what do you call it, like um, metaphysics, or maybe you even have psychic ability when you were young that you demonstrated and you were told, oh, that's evil, blah, blah, blah. These kinds of things, you know, forgive people who gave you those messages because they probably meant well. They're just brainwashed. Obviously, that's just my opinion, and I'm not trying to <laughs> suck anybody into some cult or anything like that. But what I'm saying with the high priestess is about t trusting your intuition. And if someone is trying to get inside your head, and you can kind of sense your stomach lurching when you're dealing with a certain person, then honor that. Know that this person doesn't have your best interests at heart. Oh, why did this dog have to start barking right when I'm doing my reading? I'm so sorry. But I'm going to continue because it's almost over with. But I do apologize for that. It's not my dog. Um, so please... Be aware of that and don't allow yourself to get turned off to anything spiritual simply because something is from the past has made you feel that way. Because you have a lot, and you know what, when you, when you connect to your higher self, that can lead you in the right direction. Because this person, they can make you feel like you don't know which end is up. That's, you know, the kind of manipulation that people like that can do. Um, the practical advice is the Ace of Cups, or this could be something that is, you know, to, to prepare for. Um, new love coming in. But you see, because Ace is new beginnings, but it's love. Cups are your emotions. Somebody touching your soul. Um, this is an offer of love. And um, it's like, the question is, are you ready for this? This could be, um, you know, as I said here, there could be someone, um, a new relationship with someone. Um, you know, I'm wondering if this is actually a water sign and that this card indicates timing, and I'll get to that in a second. So if this is a water sign individual, it would be either a Cancer, a Scorpio, or a Pisces, and as I said to you, I did just do Scorpio's reading, and I even put Taurus in the title because I got two cards that are connected to Taurus, so maybe it's a Scorpio individual, but that is the good person, you know, not the person who's <laughs> accusing you of things. But, um, but the other thing about this that I want to say is that this, whoever this person is, whatever sign they are, this is going to be touching the emotions. And because Taurus is an earth sign, you have to be, you know, you're kind of like rational and I would say somewhat detached. Um, I don't consider earth signs to be emotional in the classic sense. That doesn't mean that you're insensitive, but it can mean that you do not respond to somebody so readily due to their emotions. 
you know, um, Taurus is like a rock and sometimes people lean on you because you tend to um, be detached enough where you don't allow emotions to kind of like get the best of you. So you have to be ready for someone like this to come into your life so that you don't either push the person away or if they're kind of shy, but you can tell that they're kind of interested, that you allow them into your life. What is coming in is the Three of Wands. This is a card of expansion, really um, seeking the you know open spaces, wide open spaces, looking towards the, the bigger world out there beyond your own backyard so it could even involve travel like this could be like um a new job or something like that and so if you're if you meet somebody it could be that you accept a new job and that's where you meet meet that ace of cups person so even though these cards i'm reading them in a different order than that it could be that that happens first but i think it's what it's really the overall message is about not playing small in life and really wanting more than a situation that may be quite um, unpleasant if you're dealing with somebody who's kind of playing mind games with you. And the outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. This could be a relationship that, I mean, you have to walk through that door but this could be a relationship that is a permanent one. You know, pentacles is your suit, you know, relating to all of the earth signs. And it points to the kind of groundedness and foundation that a typical Taurus person is seeking. And um, the other thing that I was saying about timing is that this could point to the period of the new moon in Virgo. Oh yeah, that's right. And this would be your fifth house of romance because that's what Virgo is for you, Taurus. So wow, I, I wasn't even thinking that before I opened my mouth. So yeah, that could be something specifically related to um, the new moon happening on September 9th, a new relationship. So I, ho I certainly hope that that um, comes true for those of you who are looking for a new relationship. I'm going to pick an additional card that is from this Akashic Tarot. Let's see what that says. Hopefully it's something different than I've gotten before, and it is. Yay! Okay, I'm going to set this down so I can open the book and... Hold it up at the same time, so we shall see here. Alrighty then. The Muse. Well, let me look at it. Okay. I don't know. The, the pictures are beautiful, but they're kind of like very fine. The Muse plays a song of upliftment, of upliftment, upliftment and imagination. The petals of inspiration drift upon the wind. Filling the air with light and creativity. Uh, put it over here. This card shows a time of very heightened resourcefulness and inventiveness for you. Any creative project, new or old, can receive exceptional energy right now, both from you and from the universe. Call on the spirit muses and let them join you and the creator within to lift your project to the skies. Awesome sauce. Uh, actually, the fifth house, in addition to being about love, is about creativity. So that's wonderful. And you know what? I hope I said September of 2018, this reading is. I was thinking August, because I'm recording this on, you know, on um, August 10th. So yeah, actually, I was thinking I was like uh, in the month of September, but I was acting like that was like far in the future. And actually, that's what this is for. So, hello, and that's great for you. So, um, that's an additional message as well. Anyway, Taurus, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a personal love reading, the link to my website 
or and that specific reading is below this video. But I do wish you a very romantic, love-filled month of September. Take care. Bye.